Greetings from Academia IAPSM Econem. I am Dr. Preeti Pandey, Junior Resident from Uttar Pradesh University of Medical Sciences, Sapphai Itaba. And my co-presenter is Dr. Nitika Kesri, Junior Resident, Rajendra Prashad Institute of Medical Sciences, Rachi. We, the team, Jagan Nods, humbly present before you the 20th capsule of Public Health Update Series for the months of May and June 2024. The contents of this video will be dealt with in four parts. The first part will focus on international news with topics such as polio vaccination advisory for international travelers and accolade to Nimhans. The second part will focus on Indian programs and news with topics Ayushman Bharat Gunvat Swast event and alerts issued by FSSAI. The third part will focus on communicable disease with topics such as human case of bird flu and National Stop Diarrhea Campaign 2024. And finally, last part will focus on non-communicable disease, which includes World No Tobacco Day Update and Thalassemia Testing in RCH Program. Now, over to Dr. Nitika. Greetings. I, Dr. Nitika Keshri, shall be discussing the first and second parts of this capsule. Polio Vaccination Advisory, wherein guidelines for vaccinating international travellers to and from India was issued by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on 1st May 2024. Two changes were therein made as notified by an office order issued later on 10th June. A major change is consideration of inactivated polio vaccine in view of non-availability of oral polio vaccine in certain countries. Therefore, in pregnancy, OPV and IPV both can be given, but for immunocompromised travellers, only IPV is to be considered. The second update is that four countries, namely Cameroon, Nigeria, Somalia and Syria, have been moved from the category of polio endemic countries to countries with poliovirus circulation or having circulating vaccine-derived polioviruses. This list is amended and published from time to time. Coming to a second international update, the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bengaluru, has been a pioneering institute for various public health programs. Nimhans had been a decision maker regarding implementation of the district mental health program, which was started under the National Mental Health Program to decentralize mental health services by establishment of mental health units. Nimhans has also brought forth human rights-based initiatives spanning all age groups including children, youth, elderly and also women. Two prominent steps being establishment of a psychosocial helpline during the first wave of COVID-19 and spearheading of country's Telemanus helpline which is functional since 10th October 2022. These countrywide Telemanus volunteers also receive training and certification courses from the Nimhans Digital Academy. Till now, around 18,000 gatekeepers have been trained to facilitate early identification of suicide risk and to intervene. Recognizing these remarkable contributions to health promotion, the World Health Organization has awarded the Nelson Mandela Award for the year 2024 to Nimhans. This award had been established in 2019. In the picture, you can see Dr. Pratima Murthy, Director Nimhans, receiving the award at the 77th World Health Assembly meeting. Now moving to the second part of this capsule. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare organized the Ayushman Bharat Gunvat Swastha event in the capital on 28 June 2024. During this event, three major announcements were made, namely issuance of instant food license, virtual assessment in accordance with national quality assurance standards, and launch of Indian Public Health Standards Dashboard. Regarding instant food licensing of food vendors by Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, FSSAI, a pan-India IT platform, FOSCOS, has been set up to enhance the ease of doing business. It is meant to facilitate self-compliance through online return filings, hygiene ratings for food service establishments, third-party audits for safety parameters, and more. Following this, there will be instant issuance of licenses and registrations for low-risk categories of food businesses. 
The second announcement was the development of a virtual NQAS National Quality Assurance Standards Assessment System for Ayushman Arogya Mandirs which were previously known as Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Centers and Integrated Public Health Laboratories. This is expected to bring the centers under full compliance by the year 2026. This will be accomplished by online evaluation using virtual tours and real-time feedback from patients and staff. The third announcement was the launch of IPHS Indian Public Health Standards Dashboard. This digital platform will use an open data kit tool and will assist in real-time monitoring of public health facilities including district hospitals, sub-district hospitals, community health centers, primary health centers and Ayushman Arogya Mandirs. The newly appointed central government aims to make 70,000 health institutions compliant within the first 100 days of its formation. Now moving on to our fourth update. The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India FSSAI, has notified strict prohibition on use of calcium carbide for artificial ripening of fruits, particularly during the mango season. Calcium carbide is a greyish-black crystalline powder which releases acetylene or carbide gas containing harmful traces of arsenic and phosphorus. These elements can affect health, causing dizziness, weakness, frequent thirst and irritation, difficulty in swallowing, vomiting or skin ulcers, etc. Considering this ban, FSSAI has permitted the use of ethylene gas as a safer alternative at concentrations up to 100 parts per million. The Central Insecticides Both and Registration Committee has approved the use of Ethifon 39% soluble liquid as the commercial source for these, this ethylene. FSSAI in its second alert has mandated all food business operators to remove any claim of 100% fruit juices from the labels and advertisements with immediate effect. All existing pre-printed packaging materials should be exhausted before 1st September 2024. Additionally, the term reconstituted should be mentioned in the ingredients list if the juice has been reconstituted from the concentrate and if added nutritive sweeteners exceed 15 gram per kg, the product must be labeled as sweetened juice. Let's move on with the third part. Over to you, Dr. Preeti. Thank you, Dr. Nitika. Now coming to the third part with update of human case of bird flu in West Bengal. The International Health Regulations National Focal Point for India reported to WHO a case of human infection with avian influenza virus A, subtype H9N2, on 22 May 2024. The case was of a four-year-old child residing in a West Bengal state. The child initially presented with fever, abdominal pain, respiratory distress on 26 January 2024 and was diagnosed with hyperactive airway disease five days later. The child was shifted to the pediatric intensive care unit of a local hospital. A nasopharyngeal swab was sent to the Kolkata Virus Research and Diagnostic Laboratory, which tested positive for influenza A and rhinovirus. The sample was further sent to the National Institute of Virology in Pune for subtyping, where it was found to be H9N2. On 1st May, the patient was discharged from the hospital with oxygen support. This is the second human infection of avian influenza A, H9N2, notified to WHO from India. The first case was 17-month-old boy from Melgaard, Maharashtra in 2019. Let's briefly look into the key points about avian influenza in humans and WHO recommendations. Severity of human infection with avian influenza virus may range from mild upper respiratory tract infection to more severe disease, which can be fatal. The illness may present as respiratory distress, high-grade fever, and abdominal cramps. Conjunctivitis and encephalitis-like presentations have also been reported. It is advised to avoid unprotected contact with live poultry and high-risk environments such as live animal markets. WHO advises to raise awareness among healthcare workers to suspect cases with such manifestations and provide them with personal protective equipment. To implement a screening and triaging system in hospitals for suspected cases. To follow standard airborne illness containment protocols. 
where aerosol generating procedures are carried out to monitor healthcare workers for influenza like illnesses. Now, coming to the next update National Stop Diarrhea Campaign 2024. Ministry of Health and Family Welfare of India rebranded Intensified Diarrhea Control Fortnight as a Stop Diarrhea Campaign 2024 to address the issue of childhood diarrhea and prevent deaths from dehydration. The goal behind the Stop Diarrhea Campaign 2024 is to attain zero child deaths due to childhood diarrhea. While the existing diarrhea strategy entails a two week campaign with pre positioning of ORS to under five children and limited IEC. New strategy involved two month long campaign with pre positioning of two ORS packets and zinc as a co packaging plus extensive IEC. Focus areas are strengthening health infrastructure, improving access to clean water and sanitation, enhancing nutritional programs, promoting hygiene education. The Stop Diarrhea campaign implemented in two phases. Preparatory phase from 14 to 30th June 2024, campaign phase from 1st July to 31st August 2024. The key activities during this period include Distribution of ORS and Jink Co packages by ASHA workers, setting up ORS Jink corners at health facilities and Aganwani centers, intensifying advocacy and awareness efforts for effective diarrhea management. Now, moving to the fourth part with new update Manual of Tobacco Free Educational Institutions. This year, theme for World No Tobacco Day celebrated on 31st May every year was protecting children from tobacco industry interference. On this day, Department of Education under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare released a manual for implementation of tobacco-free educational institute guidelines. Notably, the guidelines had been laid down in 2019 alongside a global youth tobacco survey report showing that 8.5% of students in the age group of 13 to 15 years consumed tobacco. The purpose of this manual is to assist the schools in adhering to these guidelines. The implementation manual will assist the schools in adhering to guidelines to ensure first, tobacco-free campus by proper display of signages with clear mentions of penalties, second, tobacco-free education by displaying IEC material throughout the premise and developing a code of conduct, such as to direct the members to not attend or participate in activities promoting tobacco use directly or indirectly. Third, tobacco free advocacy such as conducting rallies and role play among the general public and preventing vendors from setting up tobacco selling shops nearby a school campus. Last, tobacco free monitoring by assigning a tobacco monitor. Now coming to the next update, compulsory thalassemia testing in RCH program. Recently, International Thalassemia Day was celebrated on 8th May with the theme Empowering Lives, Embracing Progress, Equitable and Accessible Thalassemia Treatment for All, emphasizes on equality in access to comprehensive care. In the world, approximately 4.4 out of 10,000 live births affected with thalassemia. Almost 1 lakh thalassemia patients in the country with approximately 10,000 new cases reported each year in India. Union Health Secretary advocated for inclusion of compulsory thalassemia testing in existing RCH program under NHM, ensuring that comprehensive care for thalassemia is universally accessible, highlighting that the burden of thalassemia can be significantly alleviated through this initiative and it promotes wide awareness about thalassemia. Some states have included this in their public health programs and activities. Other states will be urged to include and expand the screening and testing for thalassemia. Now over to Dr. Nitika for conclusion and vote for thanks. Thank you. With this, we conclude the public health updates for the months of May and June 2024. Our team, the Jagannaths, comprises of Dr. Preeti Pandey, junior resident, Uttar Pradesh University of Medical Sciences, Sefe, and myself, Dr. Ritika Keshri, junior resident, Rajendra Institute of Medical Sciences, Ranchi. 
We take this opportunity to sincerely thank our advisor, Dr. Akanksha Tomar, ma'am, and our mentors, Dr. Abhishek Kumar, sir, Dr. Swati Shikha, ma'am, and Dr. Deepanshi Saxena, ma'am, for their valuable inputs and persistent guidance, which motivated us to present on this platform. Special word of thanks to the IAPSM eConnect team, Dr. Vaseem Ansari, Dr. Medha Mathur, Dr. Achyusman Mohapatra, Dr. Parag Chawra, and Dr. Balatesh Undi for their constant support and guidance. We would also like to extend our sincere gratitude to the senior IAPSM office bearers, Dr. Anna Rao Kulkarni sir, Dr. Ashok Bharadwaj sir, Dr. A.M. Kadri sir, Dr. Purushottam Giri sir, and all the governing council members of IAPSM. We thank all the viewers of this capsule for dedicating their time to watch this video. We will soon return with the public health updates for the upcoming months. Stay tuned. Thank you.